problem I've made available to you. It's a problem that walks us through a payroll for a company. If you want to review this problem, you can go ahead and pause the recording. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move on and walk us through uh, working through the requirements here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to complete the payroll sheet and make necessary entry to record the payment of the payroll. Here's the payroll sheet that you should have in, in front of you. I've made some notes down here, uh, very important and in regards to this problem. They deal with the taxes and the withholding. So the uh, layout I've chosen to uh, follow here lays out the employees, their gross pay up through the end of August, and then their September earnings. So next we're going to figure out what the income tax withholding is on the uh, payroll for September, the September earnings. All federal income taxes are withheld at 10 percent, so simply we're going to take their gross earnings and multiply that by 10 percent. So I've created a simple formula. I just drag that down and there's no exceptions. Each employee's wa wages for that period are subject to 10 percent withholding and I've got a sum across the bottom here. The next thing we're going to be looking at is our FICA, the federal, uh, which we would call the Social Security and the Medicare taxes. Now what you'll notice down here is that there are limits, ceilings, to these certain taxes because of uh, different legislation that has been passed. So this FICA is made up of two pieces. The first part is the Social Security and once an employee hits $102,000 in wages, that next dollar is not taxed for Social Security purposes. However, Medicare taxes are paid on every penny earned for every employee. There is no ceiling. So uh, what we're going to do here is we need to take into consideration what the employee has earned up through the current period, so year to date. This first employee, this indicates that all the $800 of earnings in this payroll are going to be subject to the 7.65%. So my formula will take the 7.65% multiplied by their current gross earnings and there's the FICA tax that the employer is responsible for on that employee. This employee will be the same. You'll notice that their gross pay has not reached that limit. So I'm going to simply drag this formula down and this it's the same for these next two employees they have not hit that limit I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down now this third employee we need to be careful of look at their earnings through August 31st they have exceeded that ceiling of one hundred two thousand dollars in other words they will not be charged the Social Security portion of the FICA taxes they will be charged the Medicare portion which is one point four five percent so we will take and multiply one point four five percent times their gross pay for the current payroll period. And this last employee is the same formula. We're only going to be uh, responsible for the Medicare pay uh, wages, the Medicare tax on this gross wage. The last two columns uh, deal with uh, federal unemployment and state unemployment insurance. And so the state unemployment, I've made notes down here. You can refer back to the problem to find out where I got this is one percent. Now this is important here. If you don't get this right, what the ceiling means, you'll get this whole thing messed up. Once an employee has paid one percent on seven thousand dollars of wages for the year, they owe no more in state unemployment. So look at this employee here. They've earned sixty eight hundred dollars. They are two hundred dollars away from that limit. So they're only going to pay two, uh, one percent of two hundred of the eight hundred dollars because that will put them at the limit. So we're going to take one percent times two hundred. This next person five hundred dollars until they hit the ceiling. So we're going to take five hundred of their wages multiplied by the one percent. This last person they have no wages. They have already been paid. They've exceeded the limit. So we are not going to pay any state unemployment for any of those wages for any of the remaining employees. The federal unemployment works in a similar fashion however the rate is different ceiling is still seven thousand dollars we're gonna pay two hundred dollars are gonna be subject to the point zero zero eight percent leaves us a dollar sixty and this next employee they have five hundred dollars subject to the point zero oops, sorry the point zero zero eight 
0.0000. I've completed the worksheet. Next, we are going to go ahead and record the entry to record the payment of this payroll. The date would be the September 31st. The wage expenses are what we're going to debit. We always debit the wage expense for the total gross pay, which is up here. That's why I've summed this. I'm going to credit this as a liability. I have to show that I have an obligation as the employer to pay these withholdings. And I would do the same thing for the FICA. Uh, notice now what I, I've left off intentionally, the state and the federal unemployment portions. That is because this journal entry is only going to show the gross uh, wages payable to the employee less the deductions that the employee is responsible for paying. The state and the federal unemployment are both responsibilities of the employer. Therefore, we subtract those two and our what we call our net wages payable is 29385.25. We now move on to the requirement B. We're done with A. We need to make the entry to record the payroll tax expense for this company. So we will go back here. We'll go to the uh, payroll tax uh, worksheet I have created. And I've already done it here for us. Here's the same worksheet we've already filled out. What we need to understand with this journal entry is now we're looking at it from the perspective of the employer, not the employee. The employer has to pay now the state unemployment and the federal unemployment insurance as well as their portion of the FICA taxes. So we will take and these, take these totals. The payroll tax expense is simply a summation of all of these taxes. And it's an expense account. That's why we debit it. It goes up. FICA taxes payable are the total amount since we match that. State unemployment compensation taxes are the $7 and the federal unemployment is the $560. And the same date. We would typically record these payroll taxes on the date that we uh, record the payroll. That, were, that takes us to the end of requirement B. Let's move on to the last one which is to make the entry to record the payment of the payroll liabilities created. And we're going to assume that all the liabilities are at, paid at the end of the month. To do that, I've created some T accounts here, which help us gain some visibility as to what we owe as the employer. And if you just trace these back, my FICA taxes payable should have an amount in it. I'll just create a quick formula here that will link back to our payroll uh, sh sheet. We owe the 764.75 that was withheld from the employee's paycheck plus our portion. So in total, we owe twice that amount. The state unemployment is the seven dollars that should have been increased. And you can trace back these journal entries. All I've done is posted these entries to get them into the T accounts. The federal unemployment taxes is the 560, and the federal withholding. I've already got that linked in there. So what we're, our goal here is to get this zero out these accounts. Right now they're liabilities within, within the employer's accounting records. They need to go away. So we need to debit the FICA taxes payable for both of those amounts. That will zero out this account. State unemployment for the same thing. Uh, the $7 that's owed. The federal withholding is the 3350. The federal unemployment insurance is the 560. And the total cash that we will need to pay is simply a summation of all those withholdings. There it is. So we credit cash, we debit these out, these would get posted into their respective T accounts, and the balances would be zero for the time being.